because we have borne the image of the man of dust, i.e. Adam, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven, that is, Jesus Christ. And so it begins to under, we begin to see that this word translated head in Greek icon, literally image, is used throughout the Bible to remind us that we have been created in God's image and that we are imprinted with the image of Christ on our lives. Okay? Now hold on to that thought. The second part is that word title. I want to talk about that. In Greek, it is uh, written... The Greek word is epigraph, and literally it means inscription. Now, when I was looking through the Bible, that word inscription was once used in, um, at the crucifixion. When Do you guys remember the story where they put an inscription above Jesus' head? That's the same word that's being used to say that he is the king of the Jews. In John 15, one of the words that... It, uh, John 15 reminds us that Jesus called us, titled us, inscripted us with the name friends. In Galatians 3.26, Paul reminds us, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. In other words, we bear the name friends and children of God. It began to bring that image into my head. And so when we bring all those things together, the question we have to ask is, who do you belong to? Some of us today, this very moment, feel like we belong to a lot of things. It feels like we belong to our families. It feels like we belong to our children. Sometimes it feels like we belong to our circumstances, our jobs, or lack thereof, or the economy, or our mortgage. Other times it feels like we're enslaved by our unmet needs or unmet wants or our significant others or our spouses or our workplaces or our schools or sadness or hurt. We belong to a lot of things, it feels like, in this life. But if there is any good news in today's passage, it's this, that you and I belong to God. Why? Because you and I are like the coin that Jesus lifted up, only that we are stamped by God, not by people, powers, or principalities, that we are stamped by God, bearing the image of God and the title, the children of God. We have all been stamped by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this means that we all, or as my southern brothers and sisters like to say, all y'all believe, uh, belong to God. All of us. And that's the good news in our passage today. And that's what the coin reminds me of, that Jesus doesn't specifically talk about what belongs to God. He is trying to say, look at the image and the title that God stamps on people. They belong to God. You and I belong to God. And so the invitation that Jesus gives is for you to now give to God what belongs to God. What belongs to God? You and me. And so the invitation is for us to give ourselves over to God. That is good news. Not only that God claims us as his own because he has created us in his image and given us the title, children of God, but that there's an invitation to now give ourselves over to God. But I gotta say this. This is just the start. Jesus' invitation and command even to give to God what belongs to God is a missional statement at its heart to bring to God everything that belongs to God. The good news, in other words, is good news only when it is being shared. How can news, news by definition, has to be shared? News is not news until it's shared. So when we think about that, the good news, if we have heard any good news today that we belong to God, the statement that we belong to God cannot rest upon ourselves, but it belongs out in the world. That we need to share that good news. That it is only good news when it is shared once again. And so when we talk about our passage today, we can't conclude with the statement that we belong to God. Because Jesus' statement, give to God the things that are God's, is not give to God just yourself, but give to God everything that belongs to God. In other words, all of us. And as Christians, we have to work towards that. And that's the missional statement that I have for you today. And that's what it means to be God-stamped. 
not only to realize that you have been, uh, uh, that you are belonging to God, but that everyone belongs to God. We aren't the only ones, but everyone is included in that statement. Psalm 24, 1 says, The Lord, earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. In other words, everyone is part, belongs to God. When we realize in our faith journeys that we are not the only ones, and when we stop privatizing our faith to ourselves, we will see how God can work in this world. Why? Because when we privatize our faith, when we look at ourselves as the only ones belonging to God, you know what? The only thing that you can see is what God does in your life. Individual, me. But when we begin to see with eyes, especially like Pastor Lena spoke about last week, as we begin to see with eyes to realize that everyone belongs to God, then we begin to see and the opportunities and the possibilities and the actual ways in which God works in places other than just our own lives. And when we become participants in that missional command to bring to God everything that belongs to God. We aren't the only ones. Everyone belongs to God. What would it be like if we began to go out of these doors and to realize that everyone has been, has, is belonging to God? And that there are people out there that need to know that they have been created in the loving and wonderful image of God. And that they need to know that they are called to belong to that family. What would it be like if we went out there and realized that with everyone that we met? I think this world would be better, at the very least, than it is now. What would it be like if we went out there with new eyes to see? that God has wonderfully and fearfully made the people that we encounter. What would it be like? We need to have that image in our head. We need to know that claim of children of God in our minds and our hearts. God's stamps means that we need to realize that we aren't the only ones, but that God stamps his claim on all the people of the world. The second thing is that when, it, when we realize what it means to be God's stamp is it empowers us to be bearers of God's image and name to the places that we go. In Matthew 28, verse 19, very familiar verse, we talk about it all the time. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the question here is, who do we go in the name of? God. We don't go in our own name, but we go in the name of Jesus Christ. The, the command, that commission to go and make disciples of all nations presupposes that we carry God's image in God's name because we baptize people in the name of God. And so we need to realize that that is empowering, that we don't go on our own strength. We don't go on our own wherewithal. We don't go with our own skills. We don't go with our own gifts, but we go with God. God, and we claim that name, and we go out and baptize in that name, bringing people into belonging with God. But with that power comes responsibility. Too many times the church has misrepresented itself, and sometimes I think we are in danger of being the very hypocrites that Jesus was spoke, speaking to that day. Because the, the Pharisees and the, the Herodians were misrepresenting themselves, like they were good. Like they were out for good. That they just wanted an answer for good. Sometimes we misrepresent ourselves, or we are in danger of misrepresenting ourselves, if we don't realize that there is responsibility with that power, the power of Jesus Christ, the name of God. In fact, in the Old Testament, when we read through the Old Testament, many times over, uh, you were not even allowed to speak the name of God. Uh, if you, obviously not too many people read Hebrew, but if you look through the Hebrew Bible, in other words, the Old Testament, if you read through the Hebrew Bible, the places where God's name should be, what is God's name, does anyone know? Yahweh. And in, actual, in, in the Hebrew Bible, every time the word Yahweh occurs, what is spoken is Adonai, or Emmanuel. For some other name for God. 
Why? Because God's name was so sacred that they dare not even speak the very name of God. But when we think about that power, and, it, and, and that, that reminds me that there is power in the name of God. And when we misrepresent God, because we have been imprinted with God's image and name in the places we go, we got to be responsible with that power. How are we going to bear God's image and name of children as children of God in the places we go? Where can you go to represent God? Where is God sending you to go representing God? And so being God's stamp makes us realize that we are empowered to be bearers of God's image and name to the places we go. But with that power comes responsibility to represent God right. A few weeks ago, uh, two girls in our church, uh, actually HT and EJ's daughter Maddie, and uh, Hyunjung and Danny's daughter Ashley, they were going around and uh, they were putting stickers on people's hands. Did you guys, did anyone get that? I got that. Theo got it. Some other people. <laughs> Victor got it. They were, they were putting like stickers and giving pieces of paper to a whole bunch of people. And, and I, I had no idea what the heck they were doing. I was like, because they're all giggling, they're laughing, and they're enjoying, and they're putting stamp or stickers on everyone and giving pieces of paper to everyone. I had no idea what it was supposed to be. But one thing I realized as it, and it reminds me as I look at this passage, is this. That just like Ashley and uh, Maddie were marking people with the stickers, God in joy, in joy, claims us as his own and marks us as his own. We are all God stamped with God's image and the title, children of God. And that needs to be a reminder for all of us that we all, all y'all, belong to God. But also that in that belonging, there is a call to bring others to the discovery or rediscovery of their own belonging to God in Jesus Christ. And that's the missional statement that we see in today's passage. Bring to God all that is God's. Give to God all that belongs to God. Who belongs to God? You and I belong to God. Why? Because we have been imprinted with God's image in us. We have been given the title children of God. But it only does, or it doesn't stop there. We begin to realize that, you know what? God created other people as well. And they have been created in God's image. And they have been given the title children of God. And yet they do not realize it. And so our task and our mission and our reach, outreach effort is to make that a reality. Good news is good news only when it is shared. Good news is only actualized when that good news is given to the people of people all around us, that they can realize the good news in their own lives. And so today, if there is any good news in this today's passage, is this. You belong to God, and the actualizing of that good news is only done when we go out and bring others to God who belong to God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray.